Talcoya is sometimes a polarizing brand. Some people have particularly decried their recent efforts. However, they have made some interesting watches. And in this video, I'm going to go over the Talcoya Professional 2000, which, as the name suggests, dates from around the year 2000. I'll talk about its aesthetics, so its case and materials, and I'll also talk about its movement. And in short, it's definitely a watch you might consider. However, it certainly does have some aspects of it that are rather archetypal of its time. And it's certainly one that might date the watch a little bit, but it is interesting nevertheless. The case size is unusual, being rather larger than it initially appears. And the movement, while not in-house, is not terrible. It in fact is reminiscent of some recent Panerai efforts, being an ETA 2892 base with a Dubra Dipra 2000 chronograph module. In fact, this is similar to the most recent Panerai chronograph. So I'm going to go over what this watch is like. Now, if you have any thoughts about this watch, do let me know those in the comments below. And otherwise, if you're looking to buy a watch, go and check out my website, www.luxuryprofessor.com. I've got an interesting selection of watches that you might be interested in, including some vintage JLCs and some Omegas and the like. So with that preamble out of the way, let's have a look at the watch. Let's first get the watch out of the box. So here I have a Targ Heuer box, so that's the cardboard box. And then inside we have the old school cylinder shape, which is what they were using on watches from this era. You then unzip it and you can see the watch on its own little cushion, sleeping nicely in its case. So we can then take the watch out, unsurprisingly enough. Now you can see on the back here we have a normal clasp that we can undo on the watch to sort of remove it here, and then this will ultimately get the watch off. So there we go, watch is now out of the case. Now what you can immediately see is we have a relatively attractive looking watch, albeit one that is certainly symptomatic and emblematic of its time. What I'll go through of course is the aesthetics, and then I'll also go through the movement and the functions that it has. So let us start off with our exploration by looking at the case and the dial. As you can immediately tell, it's a champagne coloured dial, which is two-toned, so we've got the gold bezel here, and obviously the rest of it stainless steel colour. This continues through with the bracelet. So with our champagne dial, we have three inner dials. We've got effectively a small second dial at the top, and then the other two dials pertain to the chronograph. The hands, of course, are also champagne coloured, but the loom is wearing off with age. We also have a date marker here at the 3 o'clock area. So it is a relatively standard shaped dial, However, it's reasonably attractive in that everything sits together nicely. One thing that does tell the era from where this watch is from is the smallness of the dial as compared to the rest of the case. While the rest of the case is relatively large, and I'll get to the size in a second, the dial itself is much smaller than the rest of the case, with the bezel occupying a reasonable amount of real estate here. The bezel itself, like I mentioned, is in gold. Now, this will not rotate. It is a static bezel, which is good and bad in many ways. The good part is that you're not going to end up with a bezel in some weird location. The bad part is it does slightly reduce functionality. The front of it is, in my opinion, reasonably attractive, but like I said, the size of it does date the watch a little bit. The Targoya logo here as well is at the 3 o'clock area. It's in its color logo from this time period. And as you can immediately tell, it's an automatic watch with the 200 meters water resistance noted right here. In terms of the rest of the case, it's in angular stainless steel. The stainless steel is rather a matte finish here. The crown is signed with the Targoya logo. We've got two chronograph buttons, and I'll come back to these when talking about the movement. If we go further around to the back, we can see we've got a bracelet here, which you remove and open up in much the same way as you would an ordinary clasp, although it does get a little bit tight and slightly difficult to remove. So we can try to open this up right now, and you can tell immediately that it is a little bit on the tricky side to do so. So having opened it up, we can now open up this bracelet. Now on the back of the case, you can see the Targ Heuer logo, which is in a, um, in a gloss metallic here. And you can see various other information, such as the model and the like on the back. So again, relatively standard back. We've got the Targ Heuer logo in matte metal color here as well. Now in terms of opening up the case, you'll obviously need to screw it, and you've got these uh, little markers here so you can screw out the case back. 
It is, of course, not a see-through case. So that's effectively what we're seeing in terms of the aesthetics. It's an attractive enough watch, although I would not necessarily say it is a modern-looking watch per se, but it certainly is an attractive watch from the time period. It is increasingly difficult to find these in good condition. Many of them have the bezel beat up or the case beat up. This one is losing some loom on the hands, but that is a relatively easier fix than having to fix up the whole of the bezel or fix up some other major issue. The bracelet matches the rest of the watch, although the gold is slightly different tone to what's on the rest here. So we've got the end piece here. The golds are on slightly different tone here. And again, slightly different tone to the dial and also to the bezel, which I find a little bit annoying, but nevertheless, it is what it is. In terms of the clasp, the clasp also has Tarkoi on it. Again, relatively unsurprising for what it is. So that's what we've got in terms of the aesthetics overall. It's an attractive watch, certainly one that I think looks like it's from its period, but is not so over the top out of date that I would feel uncomfortable wearing it. I think it is attractive enough as far as these watches go. In terms of the size, the size is an interesting one. The reason I say that is we've got the dial is rather smaller than the rest of the case. So if we try to measure the rest of the case, if we include the crown, it ends up actually being reasonably big if we include the crown. Including the crown, it is around 42, cent 42 millimeters rubber. If we exclude the crown, then it's around 39 to 40 millimeters. However, it does look smaller, which is a little bit of an issue. The reason it looks smaller is if we measure it just inside the bezel here to measure what the dial is. Measuring it just inside, we're looking at it looking like the dial is around, we'll go with around 30 millimeters. This means it loses rather a lot of its size by virtue of how it's set up. Furthermore, if we look at the lug width, the lug width is right here, and it is around the 21, 22 millimeters. But of course, you'd be wearing this with a standard bracelet. So the lug width is unlikely to be a major issue for you unless the bracelet has gone missing or there's some other problem with the watch. So aesthetically, it's reasonably pleasing. There is, of course, loom around here, but the loom does, of course, tend to wear off. So if we cover it up, you can sort of see the loom coming out to play a little bit. And I'll try to show that a little bit better later on. But of course, with age, the loom is functioning less well than it originally was. So that's the aesthetics. Let's have a look at the movement. It is an ETAR 2892 movement with a Dubra Depra chronograph module put onto it. Because the ETAR 2892 would not itself be a chronograph ordinarily. Now, while this might sound like it's a reasonably basic movement, it is a workhorse movement from the period. It has a movement speed of about 28,800 beats per minute. It obviously, with this Dubra Depra chronograph module, has a chronograph on it. The movement itself is also relatively thin. It's under four millimeters thick, which makes it relatively easy to fit into a wide variety of cases. It is also approximately 25 to 26 millimeters in diameter, again, making it ideal for many of these watches. So it's reasonably versatile in terms of how it fits in to many watches. It's certainly a very functional and very uh, workhorse-like and very standard movement of the period. Furthermore, it is not actually that bad. So if you think about some of the more recent Panerais, there's been a recent scandal with some of the recent Panerais using an updated movement like this, an ETAR 2892A2, and then a Dubra Depra chronograph module. Obviously a little bit more recent, but nevertheless still the same basic logic which tells us that it's not necessarily the worst movement in the world. Now, in terms of the chronograph function, we press the top pusher and it starts sweeping around. It's relatively smooth, which is unsurprising given the 28,800 beats per minute. And we'll just sweep around. Again, the second hand in the small seconds area keeps functioning at the same time. Now, to set it back or to reset it, you press the top pusher and it stops. And then bottom pusher and we'll go back and it snaps back quickly. Again, to show that again, it will just sweep around when you press the top pusher, and its movement is certainly relatively elegant, and will keep going around. And as you kind of zoom in on the dial here, you can see the dial has various layers of indentation. We can see, effectively on the side here, this indented and sloped down inner bezel. So, press the top button again, 
and will stop it, then the bottom button will cause it to snap back. Certainly functions quite well, and again, no real complaints about this functioning as a chronograph. It functions as you would hope it would do so. In terms of the crown here, we can wind the crown to get the crown to pop back out. And that will then cause the crown to come out, and then if we pull it all the way out, we can start setting the hour hand. And it will sweep around like you would expect. It's quite smooth when we're setting it around here. And I meant to say we move around the minute hand if I misspoke. As you can immediately tell, the second hand at the top has stopped moving, so it has, it has hacking. Now if we move the crown into its middle setting, we can start moving the date around. And you can see that right here. Again, sweeps around and the date ends up being centered in the date slot. And again, that looks perfectly fine, which is holding up quite well given the age of the watch. And then we can push it back in, and then we can re-screw it in to re-insert the crown. Now we might want to have a look a little bit more at the loom. So to see this, let's put our cover over, and you can see blocking out the light around that we've got some loom. It's slightly difficult to show on camera, because we need to still get some light for the camera, while still at the same time showing the loom. You can see that it shows up around the hour markers. Again, this would be a little bit more noticeable in full dark, but of course we need some light to be able to actually film this. So that's effectively what we've got in terms of the Tarkoya Professional 2000. The 2000 series, while it was reasonably common at the time, has certainly held up well. It's becoming increasingly difficult to find good examples of these. It certainly is an attractive watch. It certainly is one that you might consider if you're looking for a watch from this era. And I'm reasonably satisfied with it. It's certainly an interesting looking watch and certainly one that I would consider. Now, if you have any thoughts about this watch, let me know those in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it'd be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in checking out some watches that I've got, check out luxuryprofessor.com. I've got some interesting watches available for sale, so go check that out. And otherwise, I hope to see you for future videos as well. Bye.